let's dive straight to it. I believe at this point, everyone knows that OpenAI launched a agent builder and you can access that going over to platform.openai.com as soon as that's open. And by the way, you'll have to add your credit card just because you'll be using some of their models and you'll be charged for that. But don't worry, it's not expensive at all. Go down to where it says agents, click on build agents, and then select agent builder. In this page, you'll want to click on the open agent builder. This will open up. Now in here, let's just click on create. And here you'll have a basic workflow. Now there's a difference between building workflow and building agents. And some people say it's exactly the same thing, but if you head over to Anthropic's website, building effective agents, you'll see that we have a difference between just building an augmented LLM that has access to tools, memory, retrieval, and receives an input and outputs something. And then we also have a workflow that uses multiple nodes to rather fetch for context to feed over to the LLM. And then the LLM outputs something. And let's say like this third LLM call right here could be a way to sanitize and improve the text to then get output it over to the user. So that's just a workflow. And then finally, all the way down here, we have an actual agent that iterates based on its environment, uh, performs an action, gets its own context. And then if it didn't get to a specific task, then it goes back to its environment uh, and stays in that loop until a task is done. And during that, it can execute a bunch more things. So it's much more independent and does have its pros and cons. But I'm showing this just to say that this agent builder inside of OpenAI actually can build a workflow. It can build an augmented LLM, which is what we're going to build. And it can actually build agents as well. So because of that focus, it's not the same as NAN, which allows you to connect to a lot more third party tools and yeah, just overall implement a more high level workflow while the agent builder from OpenAI allows you to focus more on the LLM part. So yeah, despite some claims that there might already be inside of YouTube of NAN is over, NAN is done. That's not really true. It's just because people see these bunch of nodes, they see a workflow and they assume, okay, a bigger company like OpenAI built this, so it's completely gonna ruin NAN, but that is far from the truth. Enough talking, let's actually build this and use a bunch of new tools that we now have access to through the agent builder. As soon as you create the workflow, you'll see this start node and my agent node, you, do, you can rename this. So what we're going to build is something that answers us based on the documents we provide for it. So document fetching agent, okay? Uh, the instructions, we'll leave that for later. The model, you can choose GP5 mini, it should be fine. Reasoning effort, just leave it as at low. For tools, let's choose the file search. I've just downloaded this PDF, zero shot continuous prompt transfer. It's just a study from archive about, yeah, zero shot prompts. Uh, we'll use that by uploading it right here. Just select the file, click open and wait for it to finish uploading. It should be pretty fast. And after that's done, just click on attach. Wait for a second. You'll see this tool attached down here. Now, instead of outputting it as a normal text, you can output it using a widget, which is also something new from OpenAI that, well, this I found pretty interesting. They're just not generating the widgets as intuitive as correct and improved as they could be. But you'll see that in just a second. If you click to create, now you'll have access to a similar chat GPT interface where you can specify anything and create these widgets right here. So if you're creating something related to, let's say you have a coffee shop and you want to sell these products, you would now be able to display this interface with a purchase button and add to cart all inside of the chatbot. Not only that, but you can actually create your own components. These are some attempts of me creating my own widgets. Down here, I created one for Google Calendar and then one of these generations just failed. But yeah, you can create some pretty nice things. This is the prompt we're going to use, but I'll place this in the description in case you need it. Let's just execute that and wait for a few seconds. This usually takes actually like about 50 seconds to a minute to get done. Okay, it's done. And now this is what it generated. I really don't like that because when it's on light mode, actually, this is dark mode. Yeah, it, it, it's on dark mode. And then the answer is not visible. And the problem with the widget creator that I was mentioning is that it doesn't have a chat interface that I can iterate and working on that widget. Let me erase this to see if, yeah, that's corrected. Okay, because it was just assuming that everything would be in light mode. And I believe that there might be one more place that that happens. Actually, there isn't. It might just be this image tag right here. If I delete it, okay, it's gone. 
I don't really need that image since it's just reading from a PDF. Now the rest here seems all right. Let me change it to light mode, back to dark mode. Seems pretty all right. Okay, now let me check if there aren't any further errors. Nope, so now I can just go up here and click to download. Please fix all errors in the editor before downloading the widget file. You get this error frequently and just by checking here, it seems like there are no errors. So you can just refresh the page as soon as you refresh it, try clicking download again, and it will finally download that uh, widget file. Now go back to the agent builder, click to upload a widget, select that it widget, click open, and you'll see its interface right in here. You can close that. And now for the instructions, this is the system prompt. First, let me click to expand prompt, and then let me add this. So this agent has a tool that can access my files mainly research and study materials. It should help the user find what they need based on the information gathered from those files. So it's just a brief explanation. Then the output must be displayed using a widget that represents everything in a clean, well-designed layout. This should be enough because as soon as we add the dot widget to the agent, it should be able to understand which is the output format that is specified down here. Okay, so with that all done, we can now click to preview and let me send out this. What does the document conclude about the main topic? Let me hit enter and see if it can fetch that just fine for us. All right, so it's done answering. It fetched for that inside of the file and then its response was basically a JSON. You're not really seeing the widget here. And I mean, I think that's a problem with this chat interface, not identifying that it needs to use the widget or not being able to render the widgets tags. So the way we're going to run this is actually closing preview. Let's click up here where it says code, click on agents SDK, select TypeScript, unless you want to build it in Python. I just prefer using TypeScript, so just copy that. Now, what we're going to do is use cloud code to build our chatbot interface inside of Next.js. So all I have here is VS Code opened in a folder called Agent Builder Test. Let me run Claude. So Claude dangerously skip permissions. Be careful with this flag. And let me just specify, please create a Next.js app that has a nice chatbot interface. Use ShadCN. Make sure the chatbot has a nice design along with being easy to you. It should also use this and then just paste in whatever you copied from the agents builder. So there it is. And now let Claude work on that. Okay. It seems like it's done. It created a dot env dot example. Let's copy that and create our own dot env place that in there, save. And now let's go back to the platform dot open AI, but now just to fetch our API keys, just click on the API key there, click, uh, I'll just type in test. There might be, yeah, there's already an agent test there. Let me click to create. I'll delete this in, in a second. Just replace the key in here. Now let me just add a new terminal, I'll go inside of that folder and use npm run dev. It should run just fine in the port 3000. Let's visit that and see how cloud code built our chatbot. Now let's make the same question we made previously, which was what does the document conclude about the main topics? Now, remember all of those documents that you added here inside of the builder will still be used. You don't have to import a new document anywhere else. It's already fetching for that document from within OpenAI. So if you select tools, then click on this specific PDF file, you'll be taken to the platform.openai slash storage where they keep all of the files we send them. Now, this is what was generated. As you can see, I can't scroll up nor down. So let's specify a bit more inside of cloud codes so that it fixes these errors. Okay, this took a while probably because I added a theme toddler because now it can be light and dark, but now you can scroll up. And my first test actually didn't find anything in the document, but then I asked exactly the same thing and it brought me a summarized answer as well as this section that really isn't that useful. Key highlights, this is pretty interesting. And then related topics, it just kind of has a UI glitch here. So yeah, there's still a lot of work with the widget part, but it's getting easier and easier and faster each day to build agents that a few years ago would absolutely require that you know how to code. So we might be seeing more and more nice builds coming along pretty soon. Now about creating those widgets inside of the chat interface, I've seen some people say that this is completely new and is going to revolutionize chatbots and everything, but we have had that for a while now 
already from Versal, Versal's AI SDK. So this is one example. You could click on what is the weather in San Francisco. Don't know if it's going to get it right. No, I want from San Francisco. Let's see if it can design. Yeah, for some reason, it can only bring me the current location and not some other ones. So yeah, it, it designed this right here. This is very similar to that widget feature. And it isn't even one of the best examples. You can find a lot more examples here in versal.com slash template slash AI. There is one in particular, which was this Gemini AI chatbot that I found to be really interesting. Like you could ask it to list flights flying from San Francisco to Rome today. And then the UI would come up with this. You could select like where you want to sit and also make payments and everything all inside of the chat interface. But it's not working right now. Like if I click on that, it just tells me that it's open source and blah, blah, blah. Maybe they just turned it off and I'm just too lazy to download and run it locally now. And that is it for today. Leave a like if this video helped you at all, if it informed you of anything. Let me know down in the comment section what you think about this new agent builder from OpenAI. And I'll see you in the next video. Till then.